So I've got plans for wiring up how I'm going to do this. I've got wire that I had on site. I uh, had a giant coil of this, maybe as much as 100 feet of it. It's quite a bit, and it's really heavy stuff. Not sure exactly. I'll, I'll take some measurements of it. But right now I'm just kind of going over the general plan. There's an existing 50 amp breaker that's right outside. And then this goes up into the attic. So the most ideal situation, I would like to have an AB circuit switch that interrupts this guy here. So I'd have it come in here and then A would power this 50 amp and then B is gonna come in to inside the shop and run over to 30 amp and a 20 amp. So then the 20 amp can go to my smaller 2 HP VFD and off to the bridge port. And the 30 amp then go to my 10 horsepower VFD which would then go to sorry I am terrible at drawing but I love doing it so it's kind of weird huh the closing so this 50 amp breaker out here typically runs my welder um, obviously I wouldn't be using my welder bridge port closing at the same time very unlikely I'd be using the bridge port and closing at the same time the VFDs might be turned on at the same time, but even that's unlikely. So I do have uh, switches in here as well. And then these, of course, will be wired to whatever the external switches, the control switches. What am I doing currently for this? So I'm going to create a temporary line that goes from here and just plugs into this 50 amp and that's going to be what this wire is initially for. We'll come down into this 30 amp and neck over to this 20 amp 220. The 30 amp will go into this switch breaker box that has a 30 amp breaker in it which will power the 10 horsepower VFD. The goal will be to wire into the original closing button so that hopefully all of the controls on the closing should remain identical to the way they are currently. I will probably use the hydraulic speed control on the closing, at least initially, just because it kind of simplifies the setup of the VFD. If I have even the slightest bit of problems with that hydraulic drive, apparently they're really expensive and I will probably convert it over to having the VFD control the speed. But that uh, job for a later date. Right now it's just going to be dumb three phase 240 going into the closing to power the motor. I wired all this up to plug into this guy here and that's not what I meant to do. So I've got to actually rearrange the configuration, put the smaller one on because this is actually at least initially going to the 50 amp breaker that's outside. That's this style plug. Rearrange the configuration no longer for this, now it's for this style. This is the, the 50 amp that I have on the outside. I'll save this for when I reconfigure this to actually plug into this one, but that'll be a later point. Quick disclaimer before anybody jumps all over me, this is all completely temporary and it's only here for me to proof powering this thing up, getting it hooked up to the motor, make sure it spins the motor. Once I actually go for the permanent installation, all the wiring will be redone, you know, actually done in, in a correct manner. So what I have done, so I already got this guy wired in. This is the other end of this cord, which is pretty long. It's about 100 foot or so. The other side's coming into the switch. The switch panel will be covered. 
and ready to go. Then uh, the two legs of 220 and the ground are coming out of here and going into here. The uh, 220 hot wires are the black and white and then the ground is green. That's just because this was an old, just an extension cord or uh, something similar, some kind of extension cord. It was uh, some stuff I had laying around. Um, some leftovers from some other project, I'm sure. So this should actually allow me to power this guy up now. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I'm going to plug him in. Then I can come in, turn this on, and see if this will power up. 220 volts of Angry Pixies coming at least to this part here. Didn't let the smoke out. And it looks like he's powering up. All right, I'll go ahead and cap this guy off. So whenever you, uh, if you purchase one of these, what are they, the Hunyang VFDs, they always come at 50 hertz. And uh, most of the American motors are 60 hertz. So they'll always send you a uh, email saying that that's the first thing you're going to want to change. Set it to 60 hertz. There's a few other settings in here that I'll have to get set up. And, uh, but otherwise, at least I've got the power on. I've got a picture of the nameplate. I'll put that over, over here so that you can take a quick look at it. Following the wires from the motor, they come up here. It's only got three wire, so I'll be able to trace that out. So it should be fairly simple to wire three wires come in here. So those three wires that go there come in and go down and feed into this switch bank here. So all of the rest of this is really just the reversing circuitry that I won't actually need to use any of that for this particular setup. For when, when I hook up to the variable frequency drive, it should just be these three wires hooking up to the VFD. Next steps here, we're going to go ahead and uh, power everything up. I've got everything hooked up here as uh, you know, just a temporary hookup. I've got the three phase hooked in to here. I'm going to put this cover on so I'm going to power everything up and then I'll go through the, the programming really quick and then we will turn it on and see how it goes. In the book I actually went through and highlighted all of the settings that I, I actually need to change and wrote down in pencil the, the settings that I uh, wanted to set them to. So this is just going to be the basic setup and test to make sure that it works. All right, so I've got uh, powers coming into this box. I'll go ahead and turn him back on. And I've actually already gone through all of the settings that I wanted. It takes a few seconds for it to boot up. All right. So if I start here, P01. So that's P01. I have set to zero, and actually it needs to be set to one. But uh, for now, I want to stay on the keypad so I can use the keypad to, to do the start and run. Once I wire in the, the switches on the front of the lathe, then I can set this to, to, to P01, or uh, to setting one. P01 is on, put it on to setting one. All right, so we'll go back, program P01, P03. And I set that to 60. P04, also set to 60. Five, I'm leaving it at the default, which is set to zero, which this is the lower frequency limit. Six is also set to 60. So the, the factory defaults on these are 50 hertz because of uh, 
you know, China running off of 50 hertz. All right, so now we got to go to P201, and this is where I pulled the data off of the motor nameplate. So P2. starting with one and I calculated the 7.5 horsepower is equal to 5.5 kilowatts and what this is set to uh, back in the main description they, they tell you that it's the the kilowatt setting so set it to 5.5 P202 is set to 60 Hertz that's off the motor nameplate motor speed again off the nameplate 1740 all right so on the motor nameplate this was actually set should be set to 200 so I wasn't sure about that I actually had a post on the practical machinist about it to find out because I, I hadn't heard of a motor being three phase 200 but apparently it's not not unheard of and uh, actually, I guess three phase 208 uh, comes out to 200 at, at some calculations. So setting it back to 200, that should uh, should be okay, especially for this first power up. All right, and then I think that was all I needed. So this should be enough to get us up and running. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get the the lathe put into neutral. All right, so that way I'm not actually spinning the the, the chuck or anything. Since this is just a, a test, I'll take a lot of the load off. We're wired up. I should be able to just hit run. Here we go. There it goes. It's spinning. Should we see if it'll turn the chuck? Let's give it a try. It's alive! <laughs> Always exciting. All 
All right, one thing I noticed um, afterwards, I, I was playing a little bit and I realized the chuck's been in the wrong way. Good thing I didn't try to take any cuts or anything yet, <laughs> even though I'm, I think I'm still a long ways away from ready to, to start on that. Spinning the wrong way on a three phase circuit, I should be able to just swap any two of the, the three phases and it should get it spinning the right way. So I've cut power, I'm going to run over and unplug. The switch here doesn't even have power going to it. I'll still be relatively careful, you know, I'm not going to touch anything. Uh, the capacitors in here could store power, so be careful uh, as I swap these guys. So pull him out, touching anything. I'll swap this guy over to here. Those guys closed up. I'm going to go plug back in. All right, turn it on. The way these things don't do anything for the first few seconds, you kind of get that, oh crap, what's wrong? Why isn't it turning on? Every time. I, I, I know about it, but still it happens to me every time. All right, let's see how this goes. That's going the right way. Well, tonight was an exciting night. Um, we got the, the VFD program, we got a temporary hookup to check functionality, and got the lathe spinning. Um, Kind of first spinning the wrong direction. Technically, I could go into the programming of the VFD and change it, but I'd rather actually use it as in the default setting going the correct direction. So we swapped the wires, got everything spinning in the right direction, and now I'm ready to start working on the actual permanent uh, configuration. I'll go through and find out what these buttons tie to back in the patch panel, and we'll probably do something, maybe throw some labels on them to keep track of everything. And then uh, we'll wire those to the BFD and get everything going. Should be able to use these buttons just as if I was hooked up for regular three phase. All right, until the next video, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Remember, I made that.